I mean, ready? Right. It's true. Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast, episode 19-1. This is our first episode of World 19, which sounds really exciting. I don't think many games have ever even gotten to a World 19. It's like the hidden levels, like way deep, deep into the files of Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> it's like if Mario, if the, if the entire Mario franchise was just one really long game. Yeah. Um, no, we are a video game music podcast. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. We listen to great video game music every week from all consoles and all generations. And at the end of every episode, we even focus on remixes and arrangements just for you. The listeners. Just for them. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, yes. Uh, it's well, just for them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Only for them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, last week, we had a bonus beats episode, which I'm re- really proud of. So, um, it's not a normal episode. It's just, I think I just introduced the song in, in the beginning, and then I just play music. And I'm really proud of it. But that was because Pernell and I had consecutive vacations. That is correct. Not and- concurrent, but consecutive, and which I- is, what I think, one of the first times it's ever happened. Like, I'm going, and then you're going. So I think it's kind of funny that even if, I mean, it's it's probably better for them if we didn't have an episode because I was pretty much a done deal the entire week. Oh, yeah. We drove, I went to a place in Florida, Orlando, for something called Dice Tower Con. Board game convention was hosted by the Dice Tower board game troupe. And um, suffice to say, we drove by car. So we left at... On that Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Why would you leave for Orlando at 2.30 in the no, afternoon? No, no, no. We were coming home. We're oh, coming home still. Well, because we wanted to experience the con. Oh there were still gosh. things to do. There's a ding and dent where you can buy discounted games because they have a nick in the corner. Yeah. And everyone gets excited for that. She's like, oh, man, so, I'll get some cool deals. Yeah, and you, also the last minute. So the con's <laughs> over. Do you really want to ship that back to Michigan? You can exactly. just sell it to me at a discount. So you, went, you went down there with Mark, and um, I went to his house. Um, to play uh, D&D with his son, actually, uh, uh, being the DM. And on the table was just stacks of games. And his wife was like, yeah, it was like an auction. And these are all dinged and dented. And, you know, he told me he didn't spend a lot of money. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> he actually didn't. <laughs> yeah. it, I'm actually almost ashamed. He, he's like the king of the deal, right? Yeah, yeah. or he's also got restraints. So <laughs> I'll finish this thing now leading up because you'll get a chuckle out of this. I think the listeners will too. So we left... Orlando at 2.30 that Sunday. We didn't get back into our neck of the woods until 10 a.m. the very next day. We stopped to sleep for an hour in Richmond, Virginia, and then drove the rest of the way. And then after that, I tr- didn't go to work, but I tried to go to sleep. Couldn't go to sleep, so I stayed up the entire day That's and then insane. got five hours of sleep. Oh, my gosh. So it wasn't until, like, Wednesday of that week that I, did, that I was able to recover and start <laughs> even, acting normally. How do you even? I'd be, like, seeing, like, hallucinations. I and, probably saw a few things. I but, probably should have been driving. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I wasn't driving. I couldn't fit in that seat, which is good. But so as everyone that listens to the show knows, I have a lot of games, both of the video and board variety. Mm-hmm. Cardboard and digital. And digital. And I have a penchant for wanting more. I see shiny objects, and I want them in my home. I may not utilize those things, but hey, wouldn't it be awesome if I had every board game that was ever constructed (laughs) in my really small house? It could happen. No, it can't. But I try. So I'm walking around the show, and the guy's like, hey, you like a guy who likes board games? You should come over here and check this out. You move skulls around the board, and you summon dead people to come to your birthday party. You're looking at me like, yes. Yes, I do want to see these things. Yes, show me the toys. <laughs> and then, like, my, our friend Mark's like, all right, Purnell, mm-hmm. what are the odds of you playing that in the next two weeks? And I'm like, but I want it oh, to do. So he was trying to be a little bit more of a voice of reason here. But sometimes yeah. he goes to the demon reason. He's like, well, it does look really good. It has nice components, Purnell. Yeah, that's when I'd pay it. for that. <laughs> I'm like, what are, what are you here for? <laughs> You're supposed to be my conscience. But uh, I ended up coming mm. out with a lot less than I would have expected to buy, though I still bought a few interesting ones. Like There was one game I bought, and again, this is going to be an interesting topic we're going to do in a few weeks, but just the thought of this. I bought a game that plays like Tetris, but it's a board game where you're Ooh. having a party, and you place sections of the party onto like a Tetris-looking board, mm-hmm. and every few turns, if you don't do enough things, the ceiling comes down on the party. <laughs> and if, it, if the ceiling reaches your Tetraminos... 
the party crashes. That <laughs> everyone gets thrown off the board. Oh, that's funny. It's really well, weird. I, from what I understand, uh, Tetris was originally designed to be a board game. Really? Yes. And that actually seems like it would make a lot of sense now because Tetraminos have become a huge board game concept that people are trying to work with. I'm glad. I'm glad because it's more of like a, it's less like strategy and dice rolling and spatial and, and placement and like that kind of whole Euro game style. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 like a, more of a puzzle. And I love them. I love games like that. But right. there was that. Mm-hmm. There was another game where, like I said earlier, you are a <laughs> necromancer. Yes, who I was going to no say friends. Was this the one. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Like you're a necromancer who has no friends. So you decide to throw a party by summoning dead bodies back mm-hmm. and having a big party. And it becomes this weird convoluted thing where you're pulling skulls out of a bag and you're placing them on like a pentagram to instead of con- get an order of different colored skulls mm-hmm. together to summon like, oh, like basketball players and rock stars <laughs> and Spudge McKenzie and all these weird <laughs> characters, but they're dead. Oh, that's funny. And it's, it oh, was that's, a weird game. That's really funny. I almost bought it. That was one mm-hmm. of the games where like Mark and his firm were like, I don't know, man, the components... They're really cheap. I wouldn't buy those, but it looks really cool and it's fun. But it's convoluted. We had a two-hour argument on the drive home about the merits of that game. I would totally play it. I would totally play that game. It was fun. Did I, you come home with it? No, nah, I, I may buy it down the line. Like well, that and Wingspan. See if they have like. Oh yeah, definitely. But we should see if they have like a Kickstarter or something. See what they're up to. It's already out. It's already no out. Oh, okay, cool. It's already done. They Kick, were selling it. Kickstarted. Now yeah. I just show them my wallet. That's right. <laughs> Take my money, please. All right, so this week um, was a topic suggested by a listener who I don't remember who. Mysterious. Because it was a long time ago. And it was written on a Word document not too far from here also. Written on a Word document, printed out onto a napkin, and then left for us at a bar. (laughs) Um, The original topic was called The Existential Detective. I still have no idea what that is. I don't is. know what that means either. That's fine. <laughs> but um, dete- so we're going with detective story. So picture. Wait, I just realized something. What's that? Existential detective. Could that just be someone who whose major pursuit is investigating the value of life and the purpose behind it? I was thinking like that, or maybe like a detective who's trying to who's thinking about if, if, if what's real. Or if they're real. That is. That's also a good one. Mm. Admittedly, I would have no idea what to pick for that, even knowing that this, that's the definition. <laughs> but. All right. So so picture this, right? You know, you're s- sitting at your desk waiting for the next uh, 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 client to come at the door. So you turn on the radio and you pull out a notepad. And the first song you hear is what Purnell plays next. Ooh. Like yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is getting sp- not spooky. This is getting existential. It's getting moody existentially. All right. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> okay. What's your first pick? Well, we got to stay. We, the World episode 19. topic is detective. Yes. The episode topic is detective. Slash investigations. Slash investigations. I purposefully avoided anything Phoenix Wright related. I just realized we should officially call it super sleuthing. Super sleuthing. I just like that. I just like the saying, saying super sleuthing. Super sleuthing 64. <laughs> Superman, super sleuthing. All right. Just jigs the episode, why don't you? Superman, super sleuthing. Hey, I wasn't thinking Superman, but. <laughs> Maybe no, a Superman no, 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 or Superman no. on the podcast. Batman was the detective. That is true. Not, not, Superman well, was. Superman was an ace reporter, which could as well, may as well double as detective. I don't work. think he was an investigative reporter. And was he any good? <laughs> He I, kept his job. He could keep his job. Well, but he was also considered one of the Daily Planet's top reporters, mm. though we never heard of any of the stories aside from Lois Lane prodding him about how lame they are. Well, you know what I just learned? That you know more about Superman than I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> I know too much about Superman. I don't know anything about him. All right, so what's your first track? What's your first uh, detective-y, detective investigatory Well, track? I want to start with a staple, because the last two will be non-staples. <clears throat> This comes from a game that I talk about plenty on the show, but mm-hmm. this is a good excuse to throw this on the show finally. It's from the game Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, and the track title is called Scrum Debate, and the composer is Masafumi Takeda. Takeda. Or Takeda. Takeda. <laughs>
Welcome back. You're listening to Scrum Debate from the game Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony, composed by Masafumi Takeda. So, this track to me is... I've been wanting to get this track on the show for a long time now, because though I'll admit it has a bit of repetitiveness to it, it's a repetition that I can stand to listen to for a very long time this, with no complaints. This is very like modern, modern dance music, like EDM style. Mm. It's really cool. This is uh, Masafumi Takada. Uh huh. Wow. So, I fun. So this game, for those who know about the Dong and Rope series, though you're not actually a detective, you are investigating because whenever a murder takes place in the Dong and Rope universe, mm-hmm. the characters have to go on an investigation of sorts to gather evidence, which they can then use in a trial scenario to determine who the actual murderer was, i.e. the person and their motive and their way of doing so. Mm-hmm. So what happens with this track, and it was new to this game, is that every once in a while you'll be in a situation where all the characters are arguing with each other, and you'll find yourself in a situation where the argument that you're having is split equally down the middle. Mm-hmm. Like one half believes that the guy was killed in this room, and one half believes the guy was killed in this room. So at that point, a scrum debate occurs where everyone's put in these like weird, like, staircase it's like a weird staircase where everybody's like facing because like in a versus mode or something <laughs> and what ends up happening is a gameplay mechanic is you'll have a character on the right mm-hmm. who states an argument like we totally we clearly determined that he was killed in the bathroom at 10 o'clock and then you have to find where within your counter arguments it was determined that that was a lie like you'll say actually we know it's not true because we found the hawk of his hair in the basement at 10 o'clock it couldn't have happened then and I was like, oh, crap, and he shuts it down. So it was like a one, two, three shotgun of, of, oh, uh, of canceling other people's arguments. And it's a lot of fun to oh, do. Oh, that's like, almost like a, like a rapid fire, like Phoenix Wright on the stand. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's it. cool. Oh, man, that's really neat. And given the whole is it, and is detective it, thing, it's kind of funny because without that's why it's called the a, game. And that's why it's called a scrum debate because mm-hmm. it's like everyone's kind of piling on and, and throwing things out. Yep. And this music's playing while everyone's like shouting at each other? Yes. <laughs> that's great. And it's great because... The, like we said earlier, the original thought that the guy had was yeah. existential detective, mm-hmm. and without spoiling the game as a whole, there is definitely a moment where like just discussion like, "Do we even exist?" <laughs> and you're like, "Child, you have to prove your existence to your friends because they believe that you don't actually exist." And the other half thinks you oh, do wow. exist. And you're like, "What?" Uh, this is perfect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay out my music um, to match yours. Interesting. I'm really excited about this. So yeah, this is really you talk about Danganronpa a lot. And, it's uh, one of my favorite yeah. series, honestly. It started out as being this ridiculously absurd premise mm-hmm. that was almost jokey at best. But by the end of the first game, I was like, it's still really ridiculous. <laughs> but I enjoy engaging it. And they just kept upping the ante every time. Mm. And then they had mm-hmm. uh, anime that kind of wrapped up the series. I'm not sure if it's truly canon or not. But when this game came out, I was like, oh, we're, I guess we're going in a whole other direction. And holy crap, did they ever go in a different direction. A direction of which I didn't even see coming. Which made it all the better. And fun thing, it may have came up on the show in the past, but I'll tell it again because you might have forgotten since then. The guy who wrote the series, like mm-hmm. the writer, yeah. this was his last game. Afterwards, he quit the company. Oh. Spike Chunso. Oh, well, that's his last game for the company, though. Yeah, he okay. left. All right. So the way he wrote the conclusion of the game, legitimately just angered so many people not because it was truly bad quite the contrary i thought it was great but because it hit too close to home (laughs) for a lot of people oh okay (laughs) it it was glorious i reviewed the game so i beat it before anybody i knew was going to play it and i got to i was like oh i can't wait for my friends to get here (laughs) i'm just gonna wait for it so i heard friends like this game is great i can't wait for the conclusion like neither can i if you remember, we saw our one friend's girlfriend at that con we were doing a panel at. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you saw Katie, and I was like, was this the game you were talking about with her, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I was like, so what did you think of the ending? And she was like, ugh. <laughs> she just immediately went downhill. <laughs> and how much did she like the series? She was cosplaying a person from the games mm-hmm. at that show. Yeah. But the ending just shut her down. I was like, fantastic. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Um. Yeah, uh, one 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 show that, that that comes to mind that's re- anime related that is like too close to home and uncomfortable is that um, indie show on YouTube and I think it's on Vimeo called Too Kawaii for Comfort. Oh yes, oh, I do God. remember that. It's about a group of kids who go to anime convention and things go very wrong and they're all horrible archetypes of people that you know mm-hmm. or may have been at one point in your life, and it is 
hard to watch. The one that I and think maybe cringed the most. Because there was a period in my life way, way back oh, yeah, I where know. I questioned doing this exactly thing where they were like, they would always say full sentences in English, but like, hi, Rob Coon. <laughs> That's right. They call everyone Coon. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> hey, Christy Che. Like, what? No. No. Oh, man. I, I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to roll into the next track. All right. <laughs> All right so imagine Boy. this. All right. Similar era then. Okay. So on that for us. So imagine this. Um, you are investigating uh, a missing person okay. but only in a, a GeoCities website from 2000. What and, th- the? and that is the premise of the game Hypnospace Outlaw for the PC in which you're just navigating like early 2000s GeoCities pages. I like the sound of that. It's crazy. Um, I don't know too much about it and I'm, I kind of don't want to look it up now because there's so much it'd be a spoiler like, a lot of spoilers. Did, probably. but the music I've looked up is incredible like it's all over the place it's all composed by Jay Tholen and I chose the track Formations Basidia and this is from the game Hypnospace Outlaw was Formations Basidia from the game Hypnospace Outlaw for the PC, and that's composed and performed by Jay Tholen. Well, I think the company should be happy to hear that you just sold a copy of that game to me, so <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, it's it's really cool. So I, I was off a little bit. I, again, I haven't been looking up a lot of information on this game, um, so this takes place in a weird alternate early 2000s internet called Hypnospace, and you're an enforcer who is investigating like illegal software, piracy, cyberbullying, and 
you'd uncover all sorts of puzzles and secrets of from people and this music this almost the whole soundtrack sounds a lot like this or like general midi and it's really interesting this i was telling rob when yeah. it was playing earlier that this track reminds me so much of freeze pop or at least the band's early works mm-hmm. that it's uncanny yeah the early early freeze pop so a lot of people remember freeze pop from like the first guitar hero game remember mm-hmm. that what was it was it was Let's Slice rock. Genius. No, no, it wasn't wasn't Guitar Hero. It was uh the very first Frequency. Frequency. Because in that yeah. game there was a song called Science Genius Girl. Yes, that was a good that was a good song. Yeah. Science Genius Girl and um Game Boy. You are not my Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm trying to remember when that one showed up. But that came out later as well. Mm, but okay. first it was just Science Genius Girl, and it that's what put them on the map. Like people were like, this band is really cool. And mm-hmm. it was like, wait, they're like friends of harmonics. <laughs> like that's why they, cause they were already a band, but that's why they were in that game. And after that, the next game it was amplitude. And they had a song called super Spro, And it was just a song saying, thanks for liking our music guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just every, at that point, like yeah. every harmonics game that came out had like one new breeze pop song in it. They started doing live shows. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it was just what their song. A lot of their songs had this sound. And this vocalist sounds a lot like Sean T. Drinkwater singing. Oh, okay. Which is it's just glorious. Well, I, I I have to say like like this I the whole sound of this type of music it's all very modern because it's all like kind of cut up guitars and like watery type drumming sounds, and I really like that feel. It's got a good ear feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and but so if if you're not interested in playing the game, search out the soundtrack like on YouTube or Spotify. It's so much fun to listen to. But I it's almost so recommend fun. getting the game just for the sake of the. Because I'm gonna tell you something. This looks um, amazing. <laughs> I've been, I've actually developed an interest in games that mm-hmm. do early like late '90s, early 2000s internet because I don't know of a bunch that exists. So. I don't have a bunch to refer to. This is like probably the third or second I've come across, but there's a game I played earlier this year called Yik, Y2K, but it's spelled like Yik, so I say that. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. one aspect of the game is that when you go home, you're on the computer to talk to people and research information to you know for mysteries and stuff in your neighborhood, but it's all done via like classic 90s forums. So you'll go on there, and it's like a bunch of old threads with the with connect complete with the lines connecting to the different topics, and then like every segment that breaks off uh-huh. is like another line. <laughs> and it made me remember how completely disorganized it all felt. Yeah. But we mastered it at the time, and we made it work. But looking at it now, having what we've already had, it's like, oh my god, this is what we had to utilize back in the I day. Know. It's this is a, amazing to play around with. It's, it's such a weird nostalgia for like a time where I was like, this is the future. You know? <laughs> Maybe one day it'll be more complicated and actually usable, but that'll never happen. And that messes with me too now, yeah. because as we get older, mm-hmm. we keep coming across these periods where it's like, this time, that even the, the third impact occurred in Neon Genesis Evangelion, or at this point... <laughs> Akira took place. Like, apparently, the date of Akira was like two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, interesting. So it's like you picture all these movies people were writing where it was like crazy neon lights and flying bikes and crazy G, like the biotechnology. It's like, what do we have now? We might be able to grow tomatoes 20% larger than they usually are grown. (laughs) Also, where hurricanes are bad. Ah, I'll take the tomatoes, but. Not the other thing. Not the other things. Like, it's just like, you look outside, I'm like. It looks very much similar to how it did back in the 80s. Oh, so we're, having, we're having our own little existential journey right now, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, uh, and and we're, we're recording this podcast for a platform in the future when really the whole podcast platform is kind of outdated and it's old. Not outdated, but it's old. It is definitely old. Definitely older than the platforms that it's being listened on right now, I'm sure. I still enjoy the fact that a lot of people, I mean, I feel like I might even have it mm-hmm. wrong, but a lot of people don't even remember or know why podcasts are called podcasts. Yeah. They just are, and people stuck with it. Well, the, the, the original podcasts, they were like small little pods, right? And you would order them online, and they'd come in like a little pod. And then when you opened it, like a, a mist would shoot out from the pod, and then it would go into your, it would just go into your face. And then you would You'd slowly, inhale it? Yeah, then you would slowly hear voices. The early podcasts were very short, only like maybe a couple minutes. Early podcasts <laughs> caused yeah. cancer, apparently. The early podcasts. You heard it here forced. Forced. You heard it here forced. <laughs> Podcasts cause cancer. Oh, geez. Don't listen to the show, folks. No, listen to the show. Listen to the show. And tell all your friends about it. Rhythm and Pixels 100% cancer free. Rhythmandpixels.com slash don't give you cancer. We do not. 
<laughs> but like that because yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they were originally called podcasts because of they, people would pl- record them and they listen to them on their iPods. Yes, yeah, it was it was a format. I think it I think it was distributed by Apple. So, and then of course. Now we got them on Spotify. You got them on. The, the, you just download them off the internet and just various websites. Still, the infrastructure behind it is old. It's still old. Like I think it's been updated a few times, but not a whole lot. So, mm-hmm. um, this whole, <laughs> which tells you that this whole this whole crazy business could come crashing down at any time. No, it won't. Cause we just turn it into something new, like yeah. like music tunage <laughs> or I don't know, Candy Blast. Um, I'll just upload it to YouTube. Ear, ear party. There we go. Ear party. Come on, check out this ear party. Who yeah. wants a new ear party? So thanks for listening to our ear party. There you go. All right, so what's your second track? That's a good segue. <laughs> well, next on the Rhythm and Pixels ear party, we're mm. going to play a track from another game. This is where we get into like uncharted pernelatory Uh-oh. in the sense that I've never played any of the games I'm going to choose tracks from from the rest of the episode. That's I'll, never happened I, li- I like I like the word pernelatory. <laughs> This track is called Beatrice's Waltz, and it's from the game Touch Detective, and it's composed by Toshiko Tasaki. to the track Beatrice's Waltz from the game Touch Detective for the Nintendo DS composed by Toshiko Tasa. So, this is a game I've never played. I had always had a passing curiosity about it. I'm probably going to buy it this week. I've if heard I can find it on the I, internet. I feel like I've seen this out there. All I know is that like I mean it's called Touch Detective because it's all you only use the touch controls on the Nintendo DS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like I originally was going to buy it when it came out because Atlas was the publisher, and I'm a sucker for Atlas stuff. But if I remember correctly, reviews when I was looking into it were saying that the detective cases were very obtuse mm-hmm. and very hard to like connect the dots for because they went on a limb to create the cases. Like they're all weird stories. But honestly, at this stage of my life, like I could easily handle that, and I think it'd be fun to solve these weird oh, yeah. scenarios. So the premise of this game is that there's a little girl named Penelope who wants to get into like the Great Detective Society or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So she is trying to get indoctrinated by solving a series of cases to prove her worth to the agency. But then the cases are not your typical stuff. Like Phoenix Wright has gone quite a ways to get some wacky cases like having to interrogate a parrot or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. This game does even stranger stuff. Like, for example, one of the cases I looked into, just to talk about on the show, was it's a case where the like people's like someone's dreams like someone's dreams are being stolen or something like that. Oh. So it turns out 
that you gain the ability to enter dreams, and you're investigating around the different dreamscapes. Oh. And you come to discover That's there's a, a cool guy idea. stealing the dreams because he crystallizes the dreams, mm -hmm. and he uses them as basically flavorful garnish for his baked goods. <laughs> because apparently dreams taste really good. I was not expecting that. Like, no one does. All I could think was like, I don't want anyone messing around in my dreams. But it's like, no, they're going into your dreams to make food. If it, what would that taste like? What would? What, what, I think it would depend on the dream. Do you think it would depend on the dream, or do you think it's just like a general like dream fluid tastes delicious? There's no way. Dreams. There are a variety of dreams. Whether I mean, because you really can't narrow down just how many different dreams there could be. Well, However, we, you can state mm -hmm. based on like style of dream or type of dream. There's dreams, there's nightmares, there's what levels of good dreams, why are they good, mm. what are they triggering you to make you happy? All right, so uh, of all, but it's so different, right? So of all the different tastes that you can have, you know, salty and sweet and savory and umami. Yeah, so think well, like... What would a dream be? Well, think of it like this. So, so a you, dream, let's say a dream where you are out with your family mm -hmm. at an amusement park. One, recalling one of your favorite days in your childhood. That could be. That a, would be a sweet dream. A sweet dream, or maybe um, you're recalling like a time where uh, you lost something. You're trying to get it back. That could be a salty dream. Salty dream. Yeah. Or you could have a dream where you're re remembering some especially illicit times. That would be a spicy dream. Oh, spicy dream. Okay, I like the spicy dream. Or um, you're remembering a really good steak. That's that a savory dream. That'd be an umami dream. <laughs> umami dreams. <laughs> But then the nightmares are the ones where it's almost like dare foods because you don't want to eat them because they taste terrible. But they're like, the, they're like the, 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 the the Thanksgiving dinner Jones's Colas of dreams. Of dreams, yeah. Like I had a nightmare where I was being chased by like a demon clown. What is this going to taste like? Rancid milk. Um, or you might have a dream where it started out okay, but then it converts into a nightmare, which means there's a complex flavor there. I like it, it starts sweet, ends up sour. Um those curdled milk? Nah, it wouldn't be that. It, have, it has to start good and get that. Uh, cereal with orange juice. It'd be like a mega warhead. <laughs> there we go. A mega warhead. Oh. It starts out sour, but then you get the sweet in the middle because the sweet was coated mm -hmm. by the sour <laughs> aftermath of the dream. I, would, um, I went to the movies. Um, so my nephew was visiting with us last week, and that's why we took a week off. We went to the movies together, and we watched Spider-Man, and we were looking at candy in the, in the theater, and the only Skittles they had were like the sour kind. And I was like, no way. No time way. To, time that, to change it. That's a Purnell food. Better Purnell believe. likes the sour stuff. I, I like sour cool. things. No, so you mentioned your nephew, so now I want to mention it on the show because I'm curious to see if any listeners will respond and comment on this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's 14. He's a 14-year-old kid. Yeah, we had a lot of, a lot of fun. We, I came over on Friday. Mm -hmm. We hung out, and he decided he wants to build Bioshock Infinite, a game that I've played years ago, and I've always loved okay, it, so, so I want to see how he reacted to th the game. This all started because we were looking for, he wanted to play horror, like horror games. He's really into scary movies and like crazy aliens and gore and stuff, because he's a 14-year-old boy, so mm -hmm. I was like, awesome, let's do it. And I was like, well, I heard Bioshock's supposed to be scary. And he's like, well, let's try Infinite. That looks neat. And he got into it. So go on. Now, when Rob says he got into it, <laughs> we're not talking about the interesting story or the atmosphere or the settings. No. He means he got into it because he's like shooting a bunch of people. And I mean everybody. everybody. If, if, if there was an NPC that could be shot and killed, he found it. And he then was upset he couldn't kill the children. <laughs> I know. I'm sitting there looking at this kid's like. Who are you? He just wanted action. And, he, and I totally sympathize with him, or empathize, or one of those thighs. Like, Whichever one you choose is going to really matter. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember being at that age and picking up, like, renting a video game that might have been an RPG and being disappointed because all I wanted to do was jump and shoot or do some kind of action-y thing. So, like, I would rent, like, Nabunga's Ambition for the NES. That's not I see, well, that was oh, it's a strategy game, but without without the manual, I'm like, all I, or no, the Godzilla game for the NES. I'm like, why can't I run around as Godzilla killing things? Because he's the all antagonist I in this game, I think. It's, it's just the technology is different now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it's not even so much that he was disappointed. Just, I was just flabbergasted by the whole, like, he would ignore the scenarios he wanted. To, he kept trying to drop Elizabeth. I'm like, she's throwing you health kits. <laughs> why do you want to kill her? <laughs> he's trying to kill every character. So at that point, what ended up happening was... He wasn't taking cover or watching out for his oh. health, so the enemy were just dropping him like flies. It so I spent the so entire much... session rooting for the enemies. Like, oh, take man. this kid out! He was, he played everything so evil. It was so much fun watching him 
um, just jump into the middle of the firefight, so not not taking cover and just like at one point there's a um, there's a stage and he has to jump he has to get down from the balcony and like take out the dudes who are coming at him from behind the stage and so he just jumps off the balcony lands on the stage which immediately loses 25 percent health now he's surrounded by about 15 bad guys and all he has is like a pistol and he's like i can do it and i'm like i don't know man <laughs> but it was it hit me in a weird way because like i said on one hand mm-hmm. i was rooting for the enemies because they had to kill this you know this malicious child yes that's essentially what that was but by that same token angry children i'm that guy who's always like there's a way to do this effectively you should do that and he wouldn't do any of it so i'm like you know you can get a health kit over there as a there's a there's an item that can increase your defense gain well that's another thing too that that's that's age and playing video games like we understand the language of of games it's like game developers like they they want you to go a certain way they 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 design things to play things a certain way because we've played them before and we understand that he he hasn't really ever played video games before i think he was just being wacky tacky and messing with us oh he was totally being wacky we played surgeon simulator over and over again where we could just take the the buzzsaw and we were just trying to slice a guy's head open (laughs) during heart surgery (laughs) see so that leads to the actual question i wanted to ask listeners such a good kid dude well he's a good kid outside of the game reverse (laughs) inside don't go near him you won't make it no Um, yeah uh what's that show old 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 90s show reboot yeah you ain't rebooting around him you gotta run yeah you gotta run for him but the question (laughs) i wanted to inquire about was like do you guys have like any you know nephews nieces grandkids we may have some older listeners um who portray some of these tendencies whether it be the i gotta kill everything on site guy or the kid who wants to violate all the game's rules because he mm-hmm. thinks he can or even worse the situation where the kid's just not playing it right well and you want to tell them what to do before we before we played that we were playing fallout 3 and i don't even want to talk to you about the choices he was making he probably the, let megaton blow up because oh he did a lot of horrible things he said he said a lot of bad things to good people. <laughs> oh mercy! <laughs> it was really fun to watch him do it. All right, so my next track, I'm going to go with here. I'm going to look at my list. I am going to go with the game Blade Runner for the PC. This came out in I think it's 1997, maybe it was 96. And this is a track called Blues. It's the blues, and it's composed by Frank Kopaki.
It's out there. We're going to get to the truth, Purnell. <laughs> it's out there. I heard. <laughs> You're listening to Blues from the game Blade Runner for the PC. That was released in 1997 on four CD-ROM discs. <laughs> this, the music was composed by Frank Klopaki, um, you know, a very famous, a classic PC music composer. Um, but, uh, but of all the music on this game, and there's a lot of really good tracks in this game, because Frank Klopaki is fantastic. Um, this is my favorite. This is so cool. It's so original Blade Runner-y. You know, it sounds like uh, uh, Vangelis, who, who was the, uh, the group or the guy who, who did the original soundtrack. It's so cool. Like, to me, like, this is so perfect. I'm imagining, like, it's dark out and it's raining and there's, like, neon lights. And it has like, to be raining. It's a detective. Yeah, story. and there's a guy in a trench coat. Definitely a trench coat. And there's, like, Not a, pants. There's a robot bartender. There's, he's smoking. You know, crazy stuff like that. I almost wanted... You know, I just thought about something. Has there been many major detective stories released? Not, not games, but movies released and like since the 2000s. And I'm asking primarily because I feel like a lot of the tropes that we are here, that we attribute to detective stories are kind of passe now. Like smoking was always a thing they always mm-hmm. did. Like, got a light. Oh, now yeah. smoke, no one smokes anymore. <laughs> it was like, yeah, what well, do they do now? Well, got a vape? It's definitely, yeah, got a vape. <laughs> Uh, it would make more sense. So this is like in the future, or the future, in quotation marks, of, um, I don't know, 2005. Or maybe, I no, I know, I know that the time of Blade Runner has passed. But have you seen have you seen the movie Blade Runner? And that's what I was going to ask. I was going to inquire about that it's at some amazing. point, which is that I, I've i never seen any of them. I'm going to get that out there right now well, for folks I mean, who might be confused. The but sequel just came out, I think, a year or two ago. I haven't seen the sequel yet. Yeah, like I've seen nothing to do with Blade Runner person. Mm-hmm. I've only heard talk of it. But I could have sworn that I thought Blade Runner was something involved in like a robot with like actual blades, or he was like a fighter, <laughs> like, a, like a like a ninja robot man. I think you might be thinking of Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But Running Man was a guy; he didn't run with knives. But there, there were like, but there were like weapons and that. Maybe I don't know. But there are robots in this game. But they're called replicants to make them, and they're they're made to look like people. And that's what's messing with me too, because so two things: okay. one. When I saw the image of what you were showing me, like, this yeah. is Blade Runner, my first thought was like, so what, is he a guy who runs with scissors? Is that what makes him the Blade Runner? He has his detective fighting style? But then the other thing that hit me mm-hmm. is that it just clicked. This is the movie that that old Tiny Toons episode was based off of. Okay, I have no cl- I know Tiny Toons. What are you talking about? There was an episode of Tiny Toons when I was a child that aired where Buster Bunny was a detective. Okay. And a woman walks into his office, and she needs help him to help her find her replicant. It's like a robot that went missing. Oh. So he hits the beat, and he's out trying to find this missing robot. And he's doing all the legwork and detective work. And it gets to a point in the movie where you think Buster's... Oh, the movie is a cartoon episode. But it gets right, to a point right. where you think Bust, Buster's had. Like, they got him. And uh, it turns out that he knows what's going on, and he boils their evil scheme to trap him. And then the woman who hired him comes upon him after he's like, you know, I solved your case. Here's your robot. She goes, how'd you know they were all fakes? And he goes, simple. Real kids don't eat broccoli. Because all the robots were eating broccoli with their oh, dinner. Oh, okay. Okay. I just I j- had to just look it up. It's, um, there, yeah, there's an episode that has references to Blade Runner. That is amazing. It did, once I saw that picture and you mentioned replicants, I was like, yeah. that's, based, that's the Tiny Toons episode. It's, it's, the ep- it, it's the name of the episode. Real kids don't eat broccoli. It was a very m- interesting. It was a really good episode. No, too. I think you would really enjoy this movie. Like this is right up your alley because this is like the question of like if the replicant actually deserves to be say it's alive and stuff like that. Oh, I do like when it's shows all do that. it's all like that. It's this this is Black Mirror before Black Mirror. This is Kiss came out in like eighty five or eighty four. Sold. Yeah, and um, it's Harrison Ford, really young. He's like really crazy good looking in this movie. Like like he's awesome, and um, all that Indiana Jones tone. <laughs> Uh, I think it's pre Indiana Jones. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hey. It's it's really cool. This is a really cool movie, and um, so the game takes place as it's 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 a, not a sequel, but it's like a it takes place alongside of it. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to take place at the same time as as the movie takes place, and so there's references to characters in the movie, and there's actually voice acting from the characters from the original movie, except for Decker, who is Harrison Ford. He's not in the game. Oh. Um, but it also, from what I learned, it's also one of the first like 3D. Um, action adventure kind of puzzler type games. You, you move around as in, in a three D world. Oh, so it's not like a, just like a, a skate that's been built and then you just kind of move them mm-hmm. in. Oh, it's not a point and click either. 
Oh, not, yeah, not exactly a point and click. So, and, but there's like a lot of sections where there's dialogue with replicants, and because and, the whole point of of Blade Runner is the main guy, he's he's hunting down replicants who are, have gone rogue. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, they're the ones who learn to they, they come to believe that they're human. Uh, later, well, the, you you discover that later on, or or they don't want to they don't want to get shut down, so they go after their their creator. Cool. It's really cool. The newest one, I don't know anything about it. Uh, I, it looks neat. It's, I think it's got Ryan Gosling in it. That's, that, that, that is not that's not selling. Me. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jared Leto is like a, a bad guy or something. Okay, that helps. Nasty doesn't. <laughs> but I will at least see the it, original Blade Runner. No, see the original Blade Runner, and you'll be amazed by like how good the special effects are. I'm sure it takes place in the year 2003. You know, yeah, the far flung like future. <laughs> well, we have flying cars now. That's too bad. <laughs> and what he means by that is cars on tops of larger <laughs> cars. <laughs> Flying down the highway, <laughs> not but, without an engine running. But this this style of music, like this track in particular, of all of, of the rest of the soundtrack, this is my jam. This is perfect. This is good stuff. This is me right now. <laughs> this is you running with scissors. This is me running with scissors, Purnell. The, the famous movie with uh, Harrison Ford running with scissors. It I love make it. The, it makes the name make more sense. It does, right? It's, because like, until I see the movie, maybe it's the not movie literal. will explain it. But right now, I'm not seeing where Blade Running factors into this film <laughs> love it. at all. Uh, all right, what's your third track, though? Not Blade Runner. <laughs> okay, we're walking away from Blade Runner. Just walking away Put from Put the Blade. dives down. All right, this is from a game that recently came out, and I only recently heard this track, but it was enough to make me say this has to be on this episode, too. Mm. So this is from a game called Judgment. It's on the PS4, and the track title, to my understanding, is called The Flower of Chivalry. And the composers for this game are Hide Nori Shoji, Yori Fukuda, and Saori Yoshida. You're listening to The Flower of Chivalry from the game Judgment, released on the PS4, composed by composers Hidenori Shoji, Yori Fukuda, and Saori Yoshida. So, I know of the existence of the game Judgment, and I originally was telling myself, just ignore it for the time being, because I haven't played through much of the Yakuza games, which this game, the engine of which this game uses. Mm -hmm. But, uh... I stumbled across this track <laughs> very recently, and it hit me like a sack of juicy Valencia oranges. <laughs> I want to play this now because this is hitting some serious notes, and it was perfect for this episode because it is a modern detective game where you are playing a guy who is trying to track down a rampant serial killer but in addition to all the usual yakuza beatdowns that you could get you could do mm-hmm. there's also act there's also actual investigation situations that take place where you have to investigate crime scenes and pick up evidence and try oh. to put the piece together it just it's totally up my alley this is my kind of game yeah, and this came out very recently so how is it critically like how are the critics people are loving it people in fact it? friend and listener scott 
actually was talking to me about this a week ago. He was telling me how much he's been enjoying the game to the point where it also had me thinking maybe it'll be worth it for me. But again, my mind at the time was like, don't really consider it because you mm. haven't played enough Yakuza. Don't bother. But like I said, I think that's going to change. This is probably going to jump the line. Also helps admittedly that this is one game where Yakuza is like a franchise of like five or six. Yeah, Yakuza is a, is a big game. It's a big franchise. It's a big series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've been on the saddest thing about Yakuza is I've been on board that franchise since the third one came out. Like, I've known of them since the first, mm-hmm. but didn't even play one until the third. And it was because I was at the PAX and I kind of played the demo with the guy telling me how to do it. I was like, don't talk to me. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, uh,. <laughs> It just was a sequence of me walking down the street. The guy's telling me about this is Japan. Well, the game takes place. And then I walk into a store <laughs> and buy an energy drink and a golf club because it seemed cool. And I went outside and there's like apparently like the way the game works, the enemies would like kind of approach you on the street and you start to a battle sequence. Okay. And the guy was trying to talk about, he was trying to explain fine. I was like, stop, I can do this. And I immediately went into my inventory. I was like, this is where I bought that golf club for. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like yelling four on the floor. Like, like, didn't you see me go into the shop and buy that golf club? I was prepared for a battle, here sir. We go. <laughs> I'm here to scuffle. <laughs> I'm here for a kerfuffle. Yeah, th- this does look pretty cool. Maybe, maybe I'll check this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll check this out too. You know what I booted up this morning was Persona tr- Five. Nope. No, um, because <laughs> I, I I got the uh, the PlayStation streaming service. I signed up for it again while my nephew was here, and uh-huh. so I started playing. Uh, tra- uh, Trails of Cold Steel. Good man. Yeah. See, I see. I I was ready to chide, chide you for Persona Five, but this is a worthy bump. Well, the, I'll, I'll forgive you. It's the first one. The game started off. I'm like, oh, the graphics are kind of like you know a little bit older and everything. But like, use that turbo mode though. Yeah, it's oh, turbo God. mode, and it's um it's turn based uh, fighting, and the music is you know really Miyako good. Ishikawa and all that. So I'm like, yeah, it's a com really sound good team. Game. I would have probably played much farther into it by now, but it made me go back to Trails um, Trails in the Sky second chapter instead. I was like, I want to play this first mm-hmm. and then go back into this with the full knowledge. But sadly for me, due to the reviewing thing I do, I'm all over this. So I've played a good chunk of Trails in Cold Steel, but didn't finish it. Mm-hmm. Played a bunch of Trails of Cold Steel 2, but mm-hmm. didn't finish it because I, I had to get enough time into it to be able to review it proper. And then I was like, okay, now I have to make myself forget all the plot advancements <laughs> and then go backwards and play this older game and then go back and redo them all. That's tough to do. That's hard to do. That's like going back and forth like between two different novels in the same series. And you're like, uh, what happened to Harry Potter back here? It Except really is. Like, that's too much. It's especially rough because without spoiling it in case you ever play through it or listeners for that matter, you go into Trails of Cold Steel 2 and by the end of the first game, apparently a lot of things happen. There's some allegiance shifts, all kinds okay. of stuff. And I'm just like, why is he over there? So is it, why is that guy doing so that? So it's good I didn't start with the second one? Yes. Okay. Do I'm, not start with the second okay, game. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I heard that. All right, so for my next track, should I go with classic NES or something newer on the PC? Let's go classic NES. All right, we, we had to get this, we had to get this game on the show. On this show, rather. This is Deja Vu. This is the NES version. Um, right, I don't have the composer for this one. I think it might still be unknown, but I'll keep looking. And this is the theme of Ace Harding. Oh, cool. And Great. It, it's less detective-y. It's less invest- investigation y And it's much more 80s sitcom-y. <laughs> 80s sitcom-y. <laughs> Which makes me happy. So this is the uh, the theme of Ace Harding from the game Deja Vu for the Nintendo Entertainment System. sitcom Ogami. theme of Ace Harding from the game Deja Vu for the Nintendo Entertainment System and it is composed by Hiroyuki Masano and 
And yeah, this game came out in 1985 for the Mac. <laughs> the Apple Macintosh the computer. Thing. Yeah, it it's really interesting. So it came out on the um, it's called the the Mac Venture interface and engine. Um, and I want to say that there was like an old school like kind of a card catalog image and text system on the Mac that was like a, like a data organization program hmm. that Apple produced or it was produced for the Mac. And this game was kind of developed on top of that because it's just images and text and you can kind of select what you wanted to do. You could select your inventory and all that. And it was just cards. And that's how it worked. It was almost like a database of things. So this was probably like the first of its kind for this type of game at the t- in that era? I don't know. I, I, I can't say yes or no to that because we're not that kind of show. I hear that. Um, uh, but that was in 1985. But then this was, um, it was ported to the Famicom in 88 and then we found it in North America in 1990. And I honestly, this is one of those games where I would see people talk about it, but I hated adventure games at that time, so <laughs> I ignored it completely. This is a game I've, I never I never knew about when I was a kid. Like Maybe it was just I just overlooked it. Or Nintendo just, Power, man. Well, I never really did Nintendo Power. Ah, touche. I didn't do Nintendo Power as a kid. Yeah, I was all about Nintendo <laughs> Power. So it was, if I remember correctly, Deja Vu was actually on one of the covers. It was an issue that I'm going to have to double check this, but I want to say it dealt with Deja Vu and Shadowrun, but definitely mm. Deja Vu. Mm. So I've always had a general curiosity about it, but I kind of dismissed it because I just didn't like adventure games. Mm. But uh, since getting into them, it's been one that I told myself I should go back, I should go back, I should go back. And I mean, listeners can probably vouch for, you know, confirm this for me if I'm not sure, but I think there was even a recent release on modern consoles yeah. of like a like a adventure collection quote unquote yeah i'm looking at the um the release list on it's not just on wikipedia and in 2017 it was on playstation 4 and xbox one so if you're into that you can check that out too but maybe that's how i'll engage it then but I when i thought of it. existential detectives i thought of this because i know that the story is is that you're um a detective his name is theodore ace harding and he wakes up in a bathroom and he doesn't know anything that he doesn't know anything about himself or anything that happened. And then he wakes up and he comes out of the bathroom. He realizes that it's in a bar and there's a dead body. Hmm. And I listen to this music and I'm like, that really? Seem, that seems very undead body. There's a dead body over there. <laughs> <laughs> Did I kill that man? I don't know. But I know I'm squeaky clean. But I like that. It's like um, like it's it's all about him trying to figure out like who he is. Is is he a detective? Like, yes. uh, uh, who killed this man? <laughs> was it him? Was it was it somebody else? Tracking, it somebody on the killer? I, it, of course it is. <laughs> Someone else did. <laughs> um, this came out on a ton of platforms, man. On just so many. It's one of the most well talked about, and I and I totally realized before. I'm sure someone already said it by now, but I did not mean Shadow Run. I meant Shadow Gate. Shadow it just Gate. clicked in my mind. I, yeah, I was with you on that one. Although Shadow Run's got it's kind of a dark sci-fi. Yeah, but Shadow Definitely. Run is more of a like not yeah. quite D and D esque, but it's it got is, that right. pen and paper style kind that basically got adapted to like a top down yes. action game, yeah, like a fantasy RPG type thing. But yeah, I think it borrowed. I think in my mind it borrows a lot from Blade Runner. But this is like the 1940s hard boiled detective type thing. But definitely running around with your cartoon rabbit buddy. But definitely solving the, crimes. Definitely the existential detective. That's he's like, who am I? What do I even believe in? Whoa, this is a deja vu situation. Yeah, hard right, snort. As um, it's called deja vu, but even though it's it's more about um, amnesia. Well, I think that's probably. I'm taking a stat shot in the dark here, but oh, yeah. that's probably why it's called deja vu. Because if he has no memory, that means he might be walking in situations regularly throughout the game that will mm. seem familiar to him because he's been there before, or talking to people that he clearly has met before. But his memory is wiped, so it's like, whoa, this feels familiar. It feels like deja vu. Hence the title, <laughs> but uh, like I said, I think I'm going to probably take a crack at this now that I know that I can I'm, I can just grab it off that collection and it came up recently. So now I, this episode, I have this Touch Detective and Hypno Judgment. Sp- I Hypno- have and, no and time. And Hypnospace Outlaw and Hypnospace. You got to play that one. I actually wrote that on paper. That's it's, it's, it is written. <laughs> so thy will shall be done. <laughs> that, that will be played. Yes. All right, so I'm going to turn this track down. This really happy track. That is an NES game that has murder and torture and all sorts of fun stuff. But happy. This, but happy. I'm going to turn this track down and we're going to get into the part of the show we call the bonus round. Bonus round. We're going to get to the bottom of this bonus round. And how. And we'll discover 
Malamars. <laughs> Malamars. I think you're just hungry now. A uh, little. This is the part of the show where Purnell gets hungry and sings about food <laughs> <laughs> to every song on the show. Nom, 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 nom. No, this is the part of the show where we play covers and remixes and arrangements based on our theme. And um, I found some cool stuff. I'm really curious to, to hear what you, what you brought out. Well, I'm actually going to take us away from Deja Vu and take us back into Joe's Bar, which exists in Deja Vu. Oh, oh shock. Okay, cool. <laughs> and the track I got is a remix of a, game, of a track from the game Deja Vu called Joe's Bar. It is the smooth jazz version. It was deemed as. Mm-hmm. And it was composed, remixed, redone by someone that goes by the name of Written in Wind. Listening to Joe's Bar, the smooth jazz version. Composed, remixed by Written and Wind from the game Deja Vu. This track makes me feel real good. Yeah, that's a good track. I even I even like the little the little section in the middle of the, with the sound effects of a guy walking in the walking in the office or something. Yes, walks in the bar, opens mm-hmm. the door, and the music of the bar just comes out and <laughs> Just assaults his senses. It's really nice. Now there's a heavy like static in the background, so I don't know if it was like the, rain. It, yeah, it's probably rain, but was, it sounds like um like the audio is like really compressed, and you can hear a lot of background noise. But I think it, it really adds to it. It sounds like you're somewhere that's kind of noisy, maybe like in, the, in a jazz club, and that's kind of the uh, people talking and noise in the background. Yeah, I honestly feel like I I like mm. when there's actually like a regular track sample I've heard in the past where you hear like people chattering mm. and I've heard it used over the background of like music and I've always enjoyed hearing that in the right context like how is this how is this how is this this is like a bunch of gibberish it's just something yeah but just like but it sounds like like words right yeah it sounds yeah. like a bunch of people mm-hmm. talking over each other it's really nice and it does at, it adds a nice bit of atmosphere to tracks like this. Mm. So, yeah, so that's really good. Yeah. So written in wind, we'll have links on the website. That's, that's, I like that a lot. I hope they do. I hope that guy or, or girl does more, um, smooth jazz type stuff. Cause I'm into that. 
Yeah. All right, so the, uh, this track is from a game that um, we could not do this episode without, and that is Read Only Memories 2064. I'm Turing. <laughs> hmm? I'm Turing. Yeah, Turing. Um, so the original soundtrack composed by Two Mellow, which is on its own, just incredible. Um, this is a remix by Amplitude Problem, and there was a remix competition, I think, that Two Mellow was judging oh. for the um, for the album. And this was the uh, this is the theme to read only memories, and this is the winner by Amplitude Problem. was the read only memories theme from read only memories 2064 uh composed by two mellow and arranged and remixed by amplitude problem what do you think of that we, 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 we. <laughs> no, i thought it was nice i very much enjoyed it i could not place what he was remixing from the game but that's not a testament that's not a negative to the mm-hmm. game or this remix it's well, just they're both really good i think it says it's the main theme and i feel like i've heard that somewhere before like I've, I've heard this theme throughout the soundtrack but i've never played the game i've only heard the soundtrack ah yeah so. it's a good game i it had that issue issue for if you're the type of person that needs action all the time though it's going to have like a bit of a slow period because there's a lot of world building and just mm. general dialogue like hey here's an arcade machine well it's kind of like a point and click right yeah Mm-hmm. definitely a point and click but it does take you from situation to situation like there's a lot of times where you're like okay we're going to transition to this locale mm-hmm. you interact with everybody there and the story will move you to this locale you interact, you interact with everybody better. there you know that kind of thing oh, so okay. it's the movement the pacing is slow because it's setting you up for things it's showing you who people are and how they interact with each other and then you have to of course solve puzzles every once in a while which is also going to slow the pacing but if you're okay with all that kind of stuff it's a gem of a title mm-hmm. 
it's yeah. good. It looks really cool. I mean, the 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 style and everything about it is looks really neat. And Touring is just he's adorable. <laughs> it's a little robot guy. Yeah. All right, so for more information on the bonus round part of our show, go to rhythmandpixels.com and we'll have links to all of the SoundClouds and Bandcamps and everywhere where you can go buy the music and support the artists. All right, thanks for joining us on Rhythm and Pixels, our episode number 19-1, The Detective Story, or Detectives, or Super Sleuthing 64. (laughs) <laughs> super sleuthing superman 64 and we're going out on um a song from pokemon pokemon alpha uh, omega ruby to an alpha <laughs> sapphire i got it right um looker's theme it's a sorrowful version compared to his normal upbeat detective theme and even though this is not a quote-unquote happy happy go bouncy bouncy theme i will say that i prefer this for this episode, and just in general, to mm-hmm. the normal looker theme, it it hits the right notes. It makes me think more of a detective, and that just that level of like a detective's life is a sorrow for one because he's always on an, onto the next case. Yeah. He can never really settle down. That's, and def- just that's definitely what you read about or see on a movie is where it's like the guy, the detective, is on his own. You know, and he's solitary and he's drinking all the time and he's not healthy. He's not living a healthy life at all. He's not living his best life. No, he's not. <laughs> but oddly enough, it makes you think in that sense that the detective is living this kind of life, and yet all the cases he's solving, he's helping people every step of the way. Someone comes in with a problem. I can't find my missing daughter. She's out there somewhere. Can you find her? And he has to go into the grimy underbelly of the city and interrogate and investigate. And at the end of the day, he finds this missing child. He returns the child to the mother. The family's reunited, but the things he's seen has broken him and sent it to his next drink. This music is like really speaking to you right now, isn't it? It really it's that, does. It's that horn. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a really good track. Well, if you have any tips or any clues, please email them to us. Rhythm and Pixels, hotmail.com. And if you'd like more information about our show, and where it can be found because it's been missing. <laughs> Go to our, you can check out our website, rhythmpixels.com. <laughs> um, you can also see us on um, all, all of the social media outlets, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, any, all those places. It's uh, Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. Check out our YouTube page. It's youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. We have a 24-7, 8-bit and 16-bit music um, station radio station just playing all the time and um oh i should say that this coming saturday mm-hmm. saturday 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 Sunday. no saturday this coming saturday at 4 p.m at the philly pod fest philly podcast festival you can see us doing the podcast it'll um, be weird it's gonna be weird but we don't know who's gonna be there we don't know what it's about. We don't know why they're going to be there. We don't know why we're going to be there. Oh wait, podcast. It's somewhere on Market Street, but yeah, the 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 details are on the are on the, our website rhythmandpixels.com or you can just Google Philly Podfest. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. So check that out. It's going to be strange. We're going to be all hepped up on caffeine and, and just getting all crazy. It's going to be a good time with video game music. And if you want to support the show, um share it with people. Tell people you know, tell the people you love. Where is my daughter? Listen to this podcast. <laughs> the answers lie there. The answers are in my past that I can't remember. <laughs> Who am I? Listen to my podcast. <laughs> Actually, we're listening. I'm listening back to the old podcast to to remember who I am. <laughs> You're just learning about me. Oh God! If you had to, if that was the only info you had to piece together, the type of person you were, <laughs> it really does make one wonder what would come out of oh, it. Oh man, that's bad news right there. Um, <laughs> I'm a. I feel like honestly. I feel like I say so much on the show. You're very positive on the show. You'd be like, if, if you had days, if you had days, if you had amnesia today, and you listened to the show, you'd be like, man, I'm a pretty cool guy. I like how how many video games have I played? How can I be? Yeah. <laughs> how did I? How, was my life full of video games? What is this? What is this? <laughs> I guess I'm friends with this Rob guy. He what sounds the, okay, I what guess. What the heck is an arpeggio effect? <laughs> and why am I the only one unfamiliar with it? <laughs> I had to bring up the arpeggio effect. You know what, dude? 
Oh man, why is everyone talking about this arpeggio effect? <laughs> it's, it's so crunchy. Is it Italian? <laughs> well, it is crunchy. It's good, delicious. Yeah, it's crunchy. Um, anyways, if you want to support our show, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels and click on the Patreon page and you can support us that way. Um, if you are a member of our Patreon supporter group, our Patreon support group, that's what they're called now, um, you get access to a live stream of us recording a show every month. So, so once a month, uh, there's an episode where we're extra goofy because we have our Patreon supporters in the stream chat joking with us. And there's other thoughts that have been looking for their with. family. No. Where are they? <laughs> where are we they? don't know where they are, but maybe. But like, there's also other thoughts that come to mind too. Like, I know, like, if you have any thoughts as a patron mm-hmm. about like games that play, either like that we should try out mm-hmm. or I don't know, so if we do on like on Twitch or something, give us a heads up there. Like, because fun fact here, um, he's not a patron, but uh, an old friend, Electric Boogaloo, has been on my case for months. Mm-hmm. About the Spyro franchise, like he's been hitting me with the deeds. Like you gotta try, it. you gotta try. It. I never played Spyro. Never tried Spyro. Get down, Spyro. I never got down with the row. Hmm. Um, so <laughs> he recently caught a decent sale on it on the PSN, and I figured this is the time I'm gonna buy this game. So I officially now am an owner of the Spyro collection, there you go. and I am going to try it. And I'm only trying it because. EB said it's a good game, and mm-hmm. I want to. I want to check out what he wants. He wants. I want to see. I want to sh- play what he wants to share. Right. So, like, that's the sort of thing that I think Rob and I both enjoy doing. Like, it's a nice way to engage with our listeners. Also, there's Mario Maker, which I got to remember to download the episodes, the ep- stages, and bring them over to oh, try one day. Oh, I want to try them. I've never tried them before, so I want. I never tried the first one, so I want to play that game. Yeah. Um, like, but getting back to it, if you are a Patreon member, and if you're interested in any more content from us such as maybe a weekly um, Twitch thing or a, mo- a monthly Twitch thing where we play games together. I mean, when we play games together, we, we, we're we pretty... We're not, we're not nice to each other. We'll say that. Um, and we don't also... Do, we, don't, we don't talk very nice to each other. Yeah, not necessarily <laughs> versus maybe. But, versus maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah But yeah, in yeah. normal gameplay, compa- like, um, co-oping and stuff, like we did... When we were when yeah, we we co-op do- it. During, the, the, during that event, the Child's Play event, we did play. Oh, we did a lot of co-ops. Um, yeah, a lot of co-op shooters. I'm trying to remember the name of the darn game. Called some. It's like Caladrum. Caladrius Blaze. Caladrius Blaze. Yeah, yeah. We played that co-op shooter, <laughs> and I, now that I think about it, I actually did yell at you a lot. <laughs> I was like, "What are yeah, you doing?" Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> not being shot. I was not being helpful. Anyway, so if you have any, if you, if if that's something that's interesting to you, um, please let us know through our email or through Facebook. Um, let us know. Oh, or also through our Discord. You can see our Discord through our website. But. Um, Finally, I want to thank all of our Patreon members. <laughs> we have our newest Patreon member is a, is a mutual friend of ours, Michael M. I'm just going to call you Michael M. <laughs> Mr. M. M could be for, yeah, M for murder or McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> he killed him, said McDonald's. <laughs> so thank you, Mike, for the support. I'm going to thank uh, that Nick Walker, Alex, the messenger, messenger, Steve, the Miller, Miller, the autistic gamer, 84, or 89, uh, Cameron, the Worma, Worma, Damien, the Beckles, Beckles, Bobby, the Arson, are we in a, Arson. Where are we in some kind of synagogue? Where, <laughs> yeah, where's this right. echo coming from? <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the echo in the synagogue. Um, uh, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk. Um, you can check out uh, the single that uh, I produced with him on our YouTube page. It's called Frequency. It's good. He's incredibly talented. Thank Wicked Sephiroth, OK Impala, Kung Fu Carlito, from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, where we're going to have a, a, a crossover with him soon-ish, Brian Pitt, Morton Gangso, Chris Murray, um, The Last, uh, who is this again? The Last Recon. The Last Recon. Daryl. Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Jupiter Jazz, Solus Sanctuary, Joe Vassalo, Chris Steenerson, and David Smith. Thank you all so much for your continued support of the show. It means so much to us. It really, really does, honestly. It really does. Um, all right, so I think that's all we've got. We don't have... I think we're trying to figure out a topic for next week, so if, if uh, we have a list, though. Yeah, and honestly... Checking I, it twice. We ha- so, I actually, I, I'm assuming we can get the coordination together. I, already, I, I genuinely have a solid of what I want to be, okay. like to be because the topic came to mind because of a listener inquiring about it. I was like, mm. you know... 
I could just give you some feedback here, but I also have an idea for an episode. All right, perfect. All right, so we'll get into that. So anyway, thanks for listening to the show, Rhythm and Pixels. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Thank you for listening. Well, Rob just shut down. But (laughs) remember, information is key to making any quality decisions. Information is important to feel as though whenever you make a choice, it is the best choice you could have possibly made, which ultimately means... Do your best to not make hair decisions unless it's sort of adrenaline inducing and you're trying to navigate a rapid river or something. But when it comes to actual social interactions and when it comes to engaging with others, do your best to get all the facts and all the information together, piece together a decent understanding of your scenario, and then present the facts. The freaking facts! I can't even read it enough. To state your case and be as informed as possible, as sound as informed as possible. The people listening to you will be happier for it. You'll be happier for it. And chances are, whatever resolution you come to in your endeavors will be the best ones you could have had. It's just that way to work.